Glory to Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the beginning and the end, the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. Today, the gates of paradise are reopened through the most holy Theotokos. The cross becomes the key that unlocks the gate. Today, our Savior is incarnate, has become taken on the flesh. As in the Garden of Eden, Christ, our God, walked with man face to face as a friend, as a brother, as a father. And when man could not hold out but fell away, he gave the tabernacle in the wilderness. <coughs> and the Ark of the Covenant, where he would fellowship with us face to face again with mankind, and this time veiled in the Holy of Holies. But he fellowshiped with us on the mercy seat, not the seat of judgment, not the seat of condemnation, not the seat of some narrow moral philosophy, but face to face on the mercy seat to show that he had no other attitude toward mankind except love, mercy, and compassion. Compassion for our human weaknesses and our failings. The compassion that we ourselves no longer have, or if we ever did. And then in the fullness of time, the tabernacle became the temple. The temple was a place called the place of meeting, the place of the presence. And as the prophet says, my temple is a house of prayer for all nations. All humanity are called to come to his temple to worship. And in the holies of holies, through the great high priest, he would fellowship with man face to face from the mercy seat. As I did not prevail in the fullness of time, he came down and turned one of our own, the most holy Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, into a living temple, into a living Ark of the Covenant. And through her he came to take on our flesh so that we might behold him face to face, and he might fellowship with us face to face. taking on our nature so he could restore it and redeem it from its alienation from the divine nature. So the Mother of God, the Ever-Virgin One, became the Holy of Holies and the Ark of the Covenant to bear the our Lord God and Savior so that he would fellowship with us face to face and through her he became one of us that we might become he became man that man might become divine again. And we look upon the cross and we say, what did Christ ask from us? What does God desire from us? We make all kinds of rules and regulations and we split human beings apart into the worthy and the unworthy, the clean and the unclean. God asks only one thing, that we accept his love, that we receive his love which he bestowed upon us in the person of our Lord Jesus Christ, a co-suffering love, a high priest now who has come to suffer together with us, to take on the burdens of our flesh, and to endure the things that we endure, to take on our human nature and bear it to the cross, And then there on the cross, <coughs> John stretches his arms to all humanity and calls him. Shortly we'll celebrate the feast of the end of Christ in Jerusalem. Just as Solomon, the son of David, was taken on a colt of, of a donkey up to be receive holy chrism to become the king of Israel, the son of David, the king of Israel by the prophet. 
and by the high priest Zadok, called to build the first temple, called to give rest and a home to the Ark of the Covenant, but to build the temple as a house of prayer for all nations. Surely the sacrifices were given, not that God needed them, but for our sake, because we needed something, some way, to respond some way, to show that we received God. As the great Iraq Metropolitan Antti Kropovitsky said, the sacrifices in the Old Testament <coughs> were hospitality offerings <coughs> to a God who they confessed was truly present with them. And now the sacrifice to God is a broken spirit and a clean heart. Humility not just before God, but humility before one another. We bow down and worship His cross. We do not worship His cross when we do not venerate one another, when we do not venerate our fellow human beings when we do not recognize the image and likeness of God in everyone, when we saddle ourselves with rules, regulations, and laws, but don't open our heart to fully receive the love of God, the great and horrible sacrifice that Jesus Christ went through to defeat the power of Satan, to defeat the power of death, to make it possible for us to become truly, truly the sons and daughters of the living God. As we now approach Holy Pascha, it's meeting, fitting that today we lift up the Holy Cross right in the midst of Great Lent as a trophy of victory to encourage us to continue the fast and to continue the preparation for that great holy day of Pascha. And remembering that as we celebrate the Annunciation, God forces nothing upon us. He entered into this world through one of us. He included our humanity in the process of our redemption. First and foremost, remember that he redeemed us from our alienation between human, human nature and divine nature through humans and God and that the mark of death was the supreme mark of our alienation and our fall. He destroyed the power of death through death. Having raised himself up on the third day, we understand that he'll likewise raise us up. And on the Feast of the Ascension, the promise that we will likewise ascend body and soul together into the heavenly kingdom. But what does God ask of us in return but that we open our hearts and receive his love. And his love is expressed in the person of Christ Jesus. And brothers and sisters, open your hearts today. Now, open them to receive the love of God, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> but you have not yet received it if you do not love one another. If you cannot embrace each other with a holy kiss and say a touch of peace, if you're still judging and condemning any other human being for whatever reason you think you have a right, for whatever reason you think you're so holy you can look down on them and condemn them, when all of that is burned out of your heart and you're no longer filled with banished condemnation, hatred, anger, bitterness, and the judgment of others, then you've begun to receive, open your heart to receive the love which God pours out upon us. And especially as we venerate the cross, to see it as a trophy of victory and a testimony of the great co-suffering and selfish love of God for mankind. And on this day, to remember the most holy Theotokos, who was our delegate, the delegate of all humanity, in the saving incarnation of the living God. Today we celebrate the beginning and the end.
the incarnation and the lifting up on the cross through earthly ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ. And after we see the result of it in his resurrection and ascension, which he promises to us as his friends. That man be friendly God, our God who loves mankind. That all these things as he represented us and represented the communion between God and men, all these treasures are promised to us and surely will be given to us. Shortly we'll celebrate the entry of Christ into Jerusalem. Then he came to purify the temple to remind everyone, my house is a house of prayer for all nations, for all people, for all humanity. If we, want to, if we will today receive the love of our Lord Jesus Christ and the grace of the Holy Spirit, renew in ourselves the intention to struggle against all those things that darken our souls and our hearts. What does God ask of us except that we open our hearts to receive his love and that we struggle to return that love to love him in return? The whole mystery of creation and of redemption and of our relationship with God is love for love, trust for trust. We put so many burdens upon ourselves and upon everyone else and one thing is necessary, that we struggle to love God as he loved us. Amen. Amen.